Pegylated interferon and ribavirin are two very interesting drugs, um, which have been historically the backbone of therapy for hepatitis C. They are interesting uh, in two ways because, uh, A, we never really quite figured out the mechanism of action. In other words, how do these medicines actually work to fix the hepatitis C infection? And two, because these medications came with significant burden of side effects. So over the last decade, our research efforts have been to try and migrate the focus of hepatitis C therapy away from these two medications so as to be able to treat large numbers of patients with fewer side effects. There will still be a role, at least in the short term, for both ribavirin and pegylated interferon alpha in the near future. For one genotype, uh, genotype 2, as well as for genotype 3, in addition to a polymerase inhibitor, which is a backbone of treatment for hepatitis C, ribavirin is still part of that therapy, and that's not likely to change for at least the next several years until pangenotypic NS5A inhibitors become approved by the Food and Drug Administration. I think interferon therapy is probably at the end of the road, uh, most likely because of the new direct acting agents. Um, we'll see uh, very little use of, of interferon because of the rates of clearance. However, for ribavirin, the story is still uh, to be told. We're, we're still using a lot of uh, ribavirin in certain genotypes, genotypes 2 and 3, as well in difficult to treat uh, genotype 1 patients who have cirrhosis. What we have found over the last uh, two years in terms of research and development was that I do not believe that we'll be ever able to get rid of the medications completely. We have now evolved into an era of interferon-free treatments. So we now treat patients without interferon 99.9% uh, .9 of the times. We have not yet come to a ribavirin-free uh, scope of uh, therapy. There are still a fair number of medications, including the DAA class of medicines, that require the use of ribavirin. The trials clearly state that if ribavirin is not added to that mix, results are inferior. For some individuals with genotype 1, the addition of ribavirin has been shown to uh, allow shortened treatment for uh, genotype 1 patients who are interferon experienced to have cirrhosis from 24 weeks to 12 weeks. So there's an advantage to ribavirin therapy in that group. And the currently approved directly acting antiviral medications for genotypes 1, 2, and 3 medic uh, genotypes 1, 2, and 3 infected individuals with hepatitis C have not yet been shown to be efficacious or at least approved for patients with the less common genotypes 4, 5, and 6. And for better or for worse, PEG interferon alpha will still be part of the backbone of treatment for those individuals. And finally, for individuals who have genotype 3, who have cirrhosis, who are interferon experienced, it would appear that the best sustained virological response rates are seen in combinations of polymerase inhibitors, ribavirin, and pegylated interferon uh, in that population. As we develop more therapies, we may see uh, the role of ribavirin get diminished, but at present we're still using it significantly. We have to be mindful because of the side effects related to that drug uh, to be monitor pe monitoring people's uh, hemoglobin. We truly believe that there probably will continue to be a role for pegylated interferon and ribavirin in the future, particularly as what we call salvage therapy. So patients who fail the standard DAA therapies may benefit from retreatment using a combination of pegylated interferon, ribavirin, and DAAs. And so I think that that's where the role of uh, pegylated interferon, ribavirin will sort of fit in the future. I don't think they're, that they will become obsolete anymore, but the number of people who need these medications will be a very minuscule fraction of what it used to be in the past.